The western city of Angers sits this majestic pile of stone and slate, a medieval fortress guarded by 17 towers and a kilometre of ramparts. The chateau of the Dukes of Anjou protects a 14th century gem, a masterpiece of French weaving, the Apocalypse Tapestry. It's the most spectacular of its kind from the Middle Ages and is displayed in semi-darkness to protect its delicate threads from the light. When you come in here, you're really taken aback by the sheer size of this 100-metre-long tapestry. And then you see how it's structured. It reads almost like a comic book with its little scenes one after the other. This representation of the apocalypse, according to St John, would have been made by scores of master craftsmen. But a great deal about how it was actually made remains a mystery. What we do know, however, are the plants used to dye the yarns. Weld for the yellows, madder for the reds, and pastel for the blues. It's a really monumental work that was very complicated to make, but it was nevertheless finished in a short time frame, just seven years between 1375 and 1382, which shows how much energy was put into making this prestigious work for the client, who must have been in a great hurry to have his tapestry. It's also a huge technical challenge to give the idea of depth. We shouldn't forget that this is, after all, tapestry making and not painting. There are difficulties in giving a sense of form and relief. What is particularly extraordinary in this shipwreck scene is the attention to detail. Here we have a man who's sinking and you really have the impression that he's underwater. It's amazing that they managed to create this sense of transparency when all they had was just thread. It's almost a multimedia piece with pictures, text, and you wouldn't think it, but there's also sound everywhere. Towns are being demolished, bells are ringing, people are shouting. We really have sound here. This expert know-how is still being put to use here in Picardy, where Gothic architecture was born back in the 12th century. In Beauvais, the choir of the St. Peter's Cathedral is one of the most impressive built during the Middle Ages, standing 50 metres tall. At the foot of the church, weavers at the National Tapestry Manufactory have been busy with their shuttles, pedals and combs for over 350 years, creating original works designed by great artists. Inside these workshops, miles of wool, silk, cotton and linen threads are kept in a spectrum of 12,000 colours. This factory has been here since the 17th century and is still based on the original idea of Colbert and Louis XIV. We use traditional techniques to weave, but we create designs by contemporary artists. During the reign of Louis XIV, we did Louis XIV style, and today we're making modern tapestries. That's why we're still in existence. There are 12 weavers here in total, all experts in this intricate art. Tirelessly working away, to transform their simple threads into masterpieces, millimetre by millimetre. Today is no ordinary day for the workshop. The Russian painter Eric Bulatov has come to witness a very special moment, when his tapestry is cut from its frame and his creation is finally unveiled. Go on, cut all the threads. You're the one to cut the umbilical cord. Philippe Play has spent 10 months working on this tapestry, and today he's seeing it for the first time. In Beauvais, the craftsmen specialize in a technique called low warp weaving, where they not only work horizontally, but back to front as well. It's a special event because it's the culmination of weeks, months, sometimes even years of work. What's important is that everyone who worked on the tapestry gets to cut a few threads. Voilà. 
The 3 meter by 3 meter tapestry slowly reveals its design, a text that reads, The Clouds Grow. It's great, thank you. A message from the Moscow artist about the situation in his country. Making a tapestry isn't difficult. It's creating something more than a tapestry that's difficult. Weaving something for artists like Bulatov or Alashansky involves getting inside their skin. They give us their paintings, but all we have to work with are threads. Yet we still have to give the illusion of a painting. It will now go off and live its new life in exhibitions, or it might furnish the office of the president, the prime minister, or an ambassador of France overseas, where it will showcase the culture and know-how of France.